so with each new update I sort of got a bit more used to it and was able to put more in in between one and the next and they're sort of broken up into like logical points you know like major plot points I think actually yeah actually I you know I didn't even notice that until right now but there's um there's like little in the game is like the uh, like treasures the achievement system and there's a few for like beating certain story getting to like certain points in the story and um, I just realized that like each one of those trophies or almost all of them come like right when um, at the end of one of the main like game demos so there you go just goes to show that they are pretty logical the way they are the demos were spread out hmm this fight I don't remember it being this long maybe I'm still kind of under leveled oh okay well, now it ends perfect Alright, and so Bradley runs away. See ya. And then there's a storm. One guy, like a, a Let's Player named Rocky, he's a pretty cool guy. He sort of thought that was hilarious because it seemed ridiculous to him that they wouldn't notice that storm during the fight and all that. Um, I guess I should maybe clarify that the storm doesn't really show up until after the fight. They're not really seeing it. For example, Kaz's, Kaz and his crew go all the way over there and they come back. They didn't see the storm then. So, yeah, it sort of shows up when your crew shows up, because your crew is the one that sort of successfully beat the trials on Atlan Island. Anyway, so yep, now we are here in the pirate's graveyard. It is spooky. <coughs> and, um, I actually had a, a few... Actually, here, I have a lot of things to say about this place, actually. First of all, it was right around when I got to this point in the game that I had finally figured out what the ending was going to be. And I mean, like, like literally, like, like exactly, like, the final boss, the plot twist at the end, everything. I didn't decide any of that until right when I started this island. So, I don't know, I, I, I did end up going back and I changed, like, some little things in the dialogue early on to try and sort of help feel like it was more set up. But, I mean, I, don't, I guess it's a fun fact. Second thing, more importantly, I guess, about this sound specifically, well, mm, I could say other things. Well, I didn't know, I didn't, when I first saw the game, I didn't plan specifically originally for there to be like a pirate's graveyard, like a, a haunted island sort of theme going on for anything. But it just sort of happened, it made sense. I think I was partly inspired by uh, One Piece. I started getting really into that actually right around when I was this far in the game. And I don't really like, I mean, I used to follow the English translations of One Piece, and then I sort of fell out of touch with it, and then, um, my friend got into it, and I sort of followed a little bit, and then I discovered the online translations, which were, like, really sweet, and, um, started catching up on it, and then even more than those, I got really in love with the One Piece wiki. Which sounds ridiculous, but the wiki, like, they have, like, a wiki for One Piece, and it's really addictive, because there's just so much stuff going on there. All these characters and all their powers and stuff. I just got really into it. So, anyway, in One Piece, there's, like, this storyline where, like, they go to a graveyard island, and it's, like, zombies and stuff. And I was partly inspired by that. Um. And, uh, what was I gonna say? Well, I guess that's sort of where the parts the idea for the Pirate's Graveyard came. It also sort of served, in terms of gameplay, as a, um, a chance for your team to sort of... It was a team-building exercise, I guess I should say. Because the game was kind of... Is, I mean, I knew it was going to be super long, and I wanted to like really build a bond between the crew. Um, and so I sort of made this island as a, yeah, like a team-building exercise, where they're all sort of separated and they have to find each other again. It's sort of a chance for them to like really like learn to, to trust each other a little bit. In particular, you get more time alone with the main character because um like if since the beginning he's always been paired up with someone else and eventually you get to the point where like you have all four crew members and you can change the order so the main guy 
hasn't necessarily been in the front of your party, um, hasn't been getting a lot of attention, and you might have, like, just fallen out of touch with him, forgotten that he's even supposed to be the main character. So, this is sort of a chance for him to take the limelight again a little bit, kind of like the monkey on Boish Island. Uh, yeah. And it also gives everyone else a chance, not just to build, like, trust with each other, but also trust in the main character, because he sort of helps one by one. He, he's the one who sort of saves each of their lives, basically. So they all sort of feel like they owe him. And then after this, this little uh, island, at the very end, well, you'll see when we get there. But basically, like, the fact that everyone has a bit more trust in him becomes kind of important. Okay, well, I chose to go this way first, specifically one because there's a healing spot and another because I want to show you this funny little thing that's in the game where um again well this it was it wasn't until right here I said this before but the only speaking protagonists are the um the 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 girl Anne and the kid Riley the monkey and the protagonist are both non-speaking and it didn't really like bother me, really occur to me, notice it until right here when I got to this part because um, I was making cutscenes like for like you know when the main protagonist saves each of his crewmates. I'm getting kind of lightheaded. Ugh. Saves each of his crewmates, and um, you know there's dialogue for each one, and this is the last one I did, and then I realized that I have a non-speaking character in a cutscene with another non-speaking character. And I had to sort of like try and create some kind of dialogue between them, but I didn't really have any. So I had to make a cutscene where they communicate without any speech whatsoever, and that was sort of silly. So you sort of saw the beginning of it, but after I win this fight, you can see the rest of it. It's silly. I mean, most people wouldn't, aren't going to see it because um, Ricky is sort of the farthest one away from everyone else. The other two are much closer, and, um... So, yeah. He's sort of out of the way. You're not likely to go to him first, but if you do, you get this funny little tidbit. Which will eventually come up when I eventually win this fight. Sigh. Um, now in the game there's really only two main battle themes, but um, there was a couple more, well there's at least one more that I considered making a main battle theme in the vein of the other two. At first, actually, I, I considered making it the final battle music. Actually, you know, the, the final battle music sort of has a story all to itself. I might get into that later. Maybe when I'm actually in the final battle. Well, I'll, okay, well, I'll, I'll sort of give you, like, a bit of a prequel to that. There was one song that I considered originally to be the final battle song, and eventually I picked something else for it. And then I, I considered making that one, like, one of the main battle themes instead. Um, and I think I'll, I'll play it... Now. Very well, well, like during my recording, so you can sort of hear it. Alright, so here's that funny little cutscene I was talking about. Bam. Telling you guys, literary genius right here. That's me. Okay, you know, I'm actually going to call that an episode here. I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching.